That is, I literally think of this. Every time I, I film over there, but every time I come here to look at this, I go, welcome back to Harry's farm. <laughs> every time. Because you know, Harry Metcalf does his farm thing. What's it called, flea beetle? He does something like flea beetle or rapeseed oil or rapeseed oil. I watched him while I was, I don't really, I'm not a fan. So welcome back everyone. This is the Mercedes EQE, arguably the best electric car in the market today. Certainly, it has one of the finest ranges of any electric car in the market today. Yes, it's on the pricey side. Yes, the looks are a little bit controversial, but I actually think this is my favorite electric car of all time, and possibly one of my top five cars ever, because this is like a Swiss army knife, only made in Germany. So let's find out all about the EQE. This car is not to be confused with the E-Class. Indeed, it's not an electric version of the E-Class. This is a ground up, bespoke built, premium electric car from a company that knows a thing or two about luxury. There's plenty of room inside for the family duties, along with a strong driver focused layout. There's some quirks in the interior layout that I'll get into in the drive, but there's actually a few things on the outside that are worth looking at. So one of the stranger quirks of this car is you can't actually open the bonnet. And so you have nothing to get at, no, nothing to check, there's nothing to do, it all happens electronically on the screen. Save for one single thing, and that's that little doohickey on the side of the car here where you put in the screen wash. Other than that, there's no access to anything under the bonnet. I want to know if that bothers you. Now, I think it's a lack of a frunk that bothers me, a front trunk or somewhere to put things at the front of the car. And that would add a little bit of storage, but I'm sure Mercedes have good reasons for closing that thing up. But I want to know if it bother you. So let me know in the comments. Would you want to have a bonnet that's actually just shut? You can't open it anyway. Even the air vent looks like the Mercedes SLS wheels, which I really love that design feature. The interior is absolutely gorgeously laid out and so simple to use and in, indeed just spend time in, which is a very unusual place to be these days. Normally you're hit with a wall of electronic stuff and you don't know what anything does, but everything in the Mercedes just seems so intuitive, apart from these small little buttons which are quite easy to get wrong. So back seat has plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom. The car is much bigger than it actually looks from the outside. I'm so surprised by the size and capability of this car because from the outside it looks like a small car, but it just isn't. I actually think Mercedes designers have been doing a savage job lately, even with these pop-out handles, but sometimes frustrating, I get it. But around the back of the car is what really tells. I know the front of the car is kind of controversial because the amount of plastic on it, but this, this is gorgeous on the back. This is the new rear end of all the Mercedes that you see at the moment. But up to this point, we've had a lot of Mercedes that have just been a converted petrol or diesel car to run an electric. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but they're not ground up. So they still have a big bonnet out the front, big boot out the rear, but this one, this has been designed to be electric from the beginning and that's what makes it more interesting to me because this and the EQS lights the way for what Mercedes is about to do in the future and I think it's just about the most exciting point of this market to get a hold of because now these cars can do the range of a petrol car with ease and if that's the way forward well, then you stop worrying about being electric then you stop worrying about charge points and this that and the other range inside this all just goes away in favor of how far the car can actually go and that's the race is on for that part right now and that's the most interesting bit to me the car can actually charge at 170 kilowatts at a capable charger obviously we had some problems here and there with the charger units over in junction 14 uh, just not able to keep up with the charge and then it seemed to just cut off all of a sudden after 352 kilometers right there on the screen but all in all the charging experience was very good because of the speed of charging this readout here is the charger operating after the reset so after the fault had appeared we plugged it back in and you can see the charge now starting to rise back up to 80, 80 90 and then head down to 100 and so on above that topped out about 124 kilowatts at its best which I think is about as fast as the charger is capable of. All right, I just finished charging up. So, whoa. That there is a woman called Anna Phoebe, I think it is. It's by the sea in, in live, it's called. By the sea in brackets live, if you want to know what that is. Look it up, it's, good. it's a good tune. Anyway, 
as I may have already said, this is now the best electric car you can buy. It's not the cheapest. This is not about price here. Let's not think too hard, because it does start at a little over 80 grand, you know, so you're, you're 89 grand. That is nice though. <laughs> this does start a little bit over 89 grand, but but you are getting as good as it gets here. This is a, this is the pinnacle, I think, of electric car ownership driving right now. Because you just don't notice it. It's not that it's long range. It's a 90 kilowatt hour battery. It's the same battery the other car could. Actually, Ford, a bigger, 102, you know. Uh, it's only 12 kilowatts really bigger than a, than a Volkswagen one. But it does 650 kilometers. And it actually does it to 650. I've done it. And I just charged in an hour, give or take an hour, because the, the machine cut off. I charged back up to, um, I'm now at, I don't know, 90 something, 80 something maybe? Uh, anyway, 557 kilometers of range to go. Here I sit out on the motorway, and, and you think I should. Go back down to 100 kilometers hour in a motorway. Nah, nah, <laughs> go up there to the 120, it'll be grand. We put on the active cruise control and let the car take away all of the sounds of the world around me. Listen. That's it. A dull tire roar roundabout house. And it's windy out there. Wind is getting up, rain is due any minute as well. We've been in sort of drought status now for a little while. So rain is due in, in a little bit as well. But I, I do have a, just one or two little little problems, okay? There are only little problems. When I'm changing lanes, which I'm about to do, I indicate by not putting the indicator on completely, doing it top down and turn. And the car tries to push you back into the lane again. So if I'm cruising along here in the driving lane and I move over towards the overtaking lane and I indicate the car shoves me back into the lane even though I'm indicating why does it do that I, I, that's just it's only a little thing but it's just like it doesn't know the indicator's on or something like what are you doing why are you changing lanes are you mad we still have a touch screen for the for the air conditioning so it's still a, but they're permanently there so I can't feel them there's no feedback off them neither is there any uh, sort of touch sensation of touch, you're just touching the glass. Sounds rude, but I mean touching glass. Um, but you still have to look and touch, but at least they're permanently there. I don't need to open a different screen to make that happen. You might also notice I have active cruise control turned on with my sat nav running here, which is Waze. Waze reports we're doing 116 kilometers an hour, the car reports 120. So there is a small discrepancy there somewhere in the speedo. Cars are set up to go a little bit slower than the speedo says it's actually doing. But I do have Apple CarPlay both wired and wireless. I have tons of storage in this car. There's big storage bins here which my iPhone 12 Pro Max fits into a little storage bin here at the top perfectly. Uh, two USB-C ports, a near field communication pad here which is a wireless charger, you can light up against sideways. Haven't quite worked that one out. So much space in here. And such a beautifully appointed interior. Beautifully. Now, a second problem I'm gonna throw at you is when you're hoovering along the road or even just driving along looking for parking, you can't see the end of the bonnet at all. It just doesn't exist out there. Neither can I see where the back part, the boot ends. Visually in here, maybe the visuals are, are fantastic on the outside, but from the inside, it's all a little bit thin and a little bit big A pillars and, and kind of B pillars are huge as well and C pillars are quite large. So there is a bit of design on the outside, but maybe on the inside, it doesn't quite carry through for just usability. But I'm prepared to forgive all that because it still has one of the most beautifully textured interiors I've ever seen. Just forget about EQS, lads. I know you, my old men buy an EQ. This is an EQE. This is what I want. This is the car for me. I would happily, Mercedes, you're looking for a Brandon Buster. I mean, this one is just perfect for me. 
I don't have to drive slow. I have about the same range as any other sort of petrol powered car. 650 is about as far as a lot of petrol powered cars will go. Unless they have a big fuel tank are really efficient. But I can genuinely put the power down. I'm at 120, I'm out on a motorway, 19.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, still under the 20 kilowatt hours, my point of sort of efficiency. And I'm hovering along at 120. Now, if I went at 100, I'd get 15 and under. If I went slower than that around the town, I'd get near, as it makes no different, 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and even dips under that every once in a while. So to, to, to kind of round up my week, because that's the first charge I've done all week. First one, I've done no others, right? So uh, my week started on actually kind of Tuesday, because we came back from a different thing. We came back from an event overseas. Uh, and so on Tuesday I picked up a Mercedes, I drove it home, it's 100 kilometers or so from Mercedes to home. Then I went from uh, home, the next morning I was filming with my good friend Dave O'Quive uh, from Dundee, we are filming up in Wicklow, which is another 100 kilometers back the other way. So I drove 100 home and 100 back to Wicklow, then 100 home again. Okay, so that's 300 kilometers in two days. And I kept looking at the, at the, um, read out because it just said yeah go on you're fine keep going <laughs> no shortage of fuel so I drove it on it's going to be overtaken here by an S class very pretty car that S class it's not bad now same sort of shape to this car as well anyway so we just left the motorway there just to finish off so I've done about 550 kilometers or so we went up to Mondello we're at the Adam LZ um, Drift Games Life event that was on in Mondello on Sunday as well, which is another 40 something kilometers from my house. So I, I didn't charge, the only thing I charged because I was coming home from Drift Games, Mondello, and I pulled into, um, we pulled into the uh, Junction 14 because of a fast charger. And I charged at about 121 kilowatt hours. So I could have got underway again in about 20 minutes, maybe less. By the time I'd gone to the toilet and got a drink inside, and don't have to get a drink by the way, it's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, you don't have to buy things at a petrol station because there's a charge point there. You can always just go on and do your thing. <laughs> but um, by the time I'd done all of that, uh, it was the, the car had more than enough charge for me to continue on. I, I had an error, something to do with the charger. As per usual, the charger let me down in some or another. The chargers are always the, the problem now. They're the ones that wreck my head now at this stage. Either it goes car not authorized, plug in the thing, card error, Charger error, it's always the same. Like I went off to the shop and came back and the car wasn't charged anymore. I looked at the screen and the car went, charger error, unplug it. Like, what happened? <laughs> it's so easy to get it right and so easy to get it wrong in these situations as well. But nonetheless, that doesn't take away from my absolute admiration and huge clap on the back for what Mercedes has done with this car because this is the pinnacle now of electric cars. It drives well, it goes well, it has plenty of performance, it's rear wheel drive, it goes for a long, long range. It's relatively, I mean, what's, what am I spending on to run it like? It's simple to use, simple to run. It's just perfect, 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 perfect. This is how you do it. I'm sorry for every other car company out there at the moment because I know the rest of the big guys will catch up. Volkswagen, BMW, they will all go, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're going to get that done. But this leaves a lot of the newcomers to the market with their jaws hanging up and going, I don't know how to do this. This is what we need. This is the future. Not that white thing coming over the hill there, the Tesla Model X. That set the trend, that set the ball rolling for sure. And right now, the big boys have come. And the big boots are out and we are absolutely at war yes it's a hundred and five thousand euros in Ireland for this particular model 350 plus but I swear to you it'll be the best money you've spent on electric cars that you had so far unless you're looking for serious performance then I would go with a Porsche Taycan or an Audi e-tron GT they're my two other performance favorites but this if you want something to waft around in that's just that a little bit different and a little bit better than everything else in the market. The Mercedes EQE 350 Plus is the only show in town. 
Look, and thank you very much for watching. I hope you've hit the subscribe button at this point because these videos are really getting traction lately and I'd love to have you along with the rest of the gang here for more of the same till you reach 100,000. And then we'll go for 200,000. It's, like, it's not like that's the end. It's not like that's the end credits or anything. So why don't you become one of the brethren and either support us here on, uh, on YouTube or you can also support us on Patreon if you want to as well. We've got a Patreon page. You want to go and do that. Some beautiful new people have supported us there. Whatever happens, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side of this very dark patch.